Hello and welcome to another fantastic episode of Paired Programmers. I'm Keith Ott. So today we're going to be talking about using web storage and AngularJS together. So before we get that far, let, let's back up a little bit here and talk about uh, when you're creating a website, how would you traditionally store data? It was, there were, traditionally, there were really two ways you could do it. Um, you could do it on the client side using cookies, um, but there were, um, which worked very nicely, but there are issues with that. Uh, first of all, cookies are limited to four kilobytes in size, and on top of it, they're transmitted on every HTTP call, which in some cases is fine. If you're using that to store some sort of session identifier, you want that to be transferred automatically for you. But if you're saving something that you don't really need on the server, or let's say you're just doing, um, in the case of you know, something with Angular, where you're really just using a CDN and you don't really need data going back, doesn't make a lot of sense. The other side of things, you could do server side using your traditional HTTP posts, puts, deletes, um, the, which uh, is very nice in the sense that you have something that um, you as a developer can control, you can verify, the user can't modify that data, but it does have downsides in that um, there's additional infrastructure needed. You need some place to put it, like a, a server, you need some sort of storage mechanism, whether it's a database, whether it's a flat file, whatever it might be. Um, and on top of these, both of these, that they also have their own sh um, issues with accessing them too. Like, it isn't as straightforward as it could be. You might be doing, say, an AJAX request for server side. So this gets us to web storage. Uh, web storage is, um, it, it, it's all client side, um, which, but the benefit is, unlike a cookie, that the data isn't transferred on every request. Um, the downside is, though, of course, is because it is pure client side, the user can modify it. So you wouldn't want to use web storage for something that um, you wouldn't want the user to touch. But if it's something like, say, um, preferences, or maybe it's just you're caching data, something that if they modify it, it doesn't really make any difference, then it's a good choice. Um, another benefit is that it has larger storage compared to cookies. Um, you can do, it depends on the browser, it starts at about 5 meg. Some browsers allow you to store even more data. Um, and that's just storing data without prompting the user. Uh, for example, in Firefox, if you try to save more than 5 megabytes of local storage, um, it'll actually pop up and ask the user, this website is requesting to store more data, uh, can I do this? Um, you also have, uh, there's really two ways of doing it. You can do it um, session only, uh, which means that when the user closes their browser, this data will be gone. This is useful in case, like say you have um, two windows and the user is accessing the same web app through both windows. Um, this allows you to share data between those windows. You can also do long term, uh, which is you traditionally refer to as the local storage, we'll get to in just a minute. This is the one that if they close their web browser, they reboot the computer, whatever it might be, that data is still going to be there. Of course, if they clear their data, they'll get rid of it, but it will persist between sessions. And another benefit, too, is that it has a better scripting interface. Um, it's stuff baked right into JavaScript, which, let's get to that right now. So if you want to use web storage in just a pure um, JavaScript application, uh, you access it through either the local storage or the session storage variable. So if you want to save something to the local storage, you simply do local storage dot set item, and you specify your key and your value. This follows uh, the traditional dictionary pattern. Um, and if you want to pull it out, you just simply say my value equals local storage dot get item, and you specify the key. Now, one thing to note, though, is that local storage and session storage only allows you to store strings. So if you want to store a complex data type, you'd want to use json.stringify and json.parse, um, and that'll let you um, store and retrieve more complex data types. Now, is there some way to wrap this up in Angular? Well, there is. Um, there's actually a pretty cool GitHub uh, project that I'll be demonstrating here that um, encapsulates all this and does it in a very nice Angular way. Now, there's a lot of features with it. Um, we'll jump over to the web page in just a minute to take a look at it. But there's a couple things that we'll be using in this tutorial here. The first one is set prefix. Um, this is a way to kind of say the variables that I'm accessing within this application um, to make sure it, it prevents collisions with other um, local storage variables, or keys I should say, um, that are being done on the same domain. So let's say you have, maybe I have, um, you know, example.com slash, 
uh, game example.com slash application. If they both have, like, say, they're using name for local storage, there'd be a collision there because uh, local storage is done on a domain basis. By using set prefix, we can ensure that that the variables that we're retrieving and setting will not modify anything else. The next one is set. Pretty straightforward. We're just going to say, I want to put this data into local storage. The next one is get. We're going to, we want to retrieve data from local storage. And there's also remove and clear all. This allows us to delete data from the local storage. And with that, let's start diving into some things here. So let's first take a little peek at the uh, GitHub page for the project that we'll be using. Um, I'm not going to go through everything, but I do recommend checking this out. There's a lot of great information here. Um, this project goes into a lot of information, really describes everything that you'll need. Uh, a couple other things just to point out. Uh, set storage type, if you want to change to session storage, uh, you could do it uh, through here. We'll only be using uh, local storage, so we won't be doing that. Um, it also has supports cookie fallback. Because local storage is so widely supported, uh, we don't. I, I'm not concerned about doing that right now. But based on what browsers you're targeting, you may need to do this. If you're targeting, say, uh, IE7, you might want to set uh, local. You might want to set cookie fallback. Um, but yeah, I would recommend checking this out. Um, and even uh, has uh, modernizer type things to see is it actually uh, supported and things like that. So let's jump over to our example here. I'm um, working on a simple little game. It's a little guessing game. Uh, you have to guess, is the next number going to be higher or lower? And there's a high score table here. So I'm going to go through. Let's do uh, lower, 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 higher. Great, so I set a high score. So I'm going to go ahead and enter my name here and hit OK. And I can see it appeared here. But now, because I'm not doing any sort of storage to demonstrate, I'll close this and reopen. Let's navigate back here. And as I can see, it's gone. So let's go ahead and plug in, uh, get some local storage here. So first of all, to kind of show the uh, example here, I'm not going to go through everything because a lot of stuff isn't... Um, it's not really necessary to understand this example, but uh, just kind of high level, I'm using UI router to uh, go through the different states of the game, the actual gameplay where you enter the high score and a game over one. Um, but everything we'll care about ends up going through this high score factory. So let's go through this in a little bit of detail here. So I have a couple different um, interfaces here that I can get the high scores, which will retrieve the high scores. Um, if they haven't been initialized, I just have some fake data that we can throw in here to see it. Um, you can go here, you can determine whether or not a score is a high score, which is useful to determine which state we should transition to. We can add a high score, where it'll go ahead and add a score and the corresponding name. Uh, get previous name, this is so um, It'll actually remember the last name that was entered, so we can pre-populate it. So if somebody's playing again and again and again, they don't want to keep retyping their name. And then a simple reset one. There is a reset, if I jump back here, there's a reset high score option, uh, which might make sense if you've been playing a lot, you want to start out fresh, whatever the case may be. Um, and one other thing, just to point out the way we're actually um, adding in high scores is there's this sort high scores. We're using low dash, which I've just uh, went ahead and just did a very simple wrapping up of low dash. Um, this basically we add it on um, to the list of it, we sort it, and then we uh, rip it down to the maximum number of scores. So momentarily there'd be 11 scores. We sort it, take off the bottom one, and then we have it. So I think we're ready to uh, add some local storage to this. So the first thing we'll want to do is navigate to our directory, and I'm going to want to install Angular local storage, and I'm going to save this to persist it in my Bower file. I'm going to go ahead and do this, and it'll do some work here and download some things. Okay, so now we have it in there. I've already uh, installed it beforehand, so you'll probably see a few other things as it's downloading. So now I'll have it in my Bower components. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is jump over to my index file, and I'll actually want to include this. So I'm going to do just this, Bower components, Angular local storage, dist, and in this case, I'm just going to include the minified version. Um, if you, you may want to include uh, the full version for debugging purposes, 
whatever. It's really your choice. So the next thing I'm going to want to do is jump over to app.js. I need to, which this is where I'm actually instantiate, instantiating the module. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is add my local storage module up here as a dependency. And next, I'm going to want to configure it. I'm going to actually want to set a prefix. So let's do local storage service provider. And I will pass that in. And within here, I'm then going to want to say local storage service provider dot set prefix. And I'm just going to call it high low after the name of this game. Okay, so the next thing we'll want to do is then jump over to the high score factory and actually wire this up. So the first thing I need to do is inject local storage uh, service. And we'll add this here local storage service. Okay, so we can first remove high score and previous name. This was just used to store it locally. So we're going to go ahead and rip that out. Now, the first thing we'll want to do is head on into get scores, and we'll want to retrieve it from here. Now, something to note, um, there's really a couple different ways that you can do this. Uh, you could either do it when you first initialize your application. You could retrieve it to see, uh, is this data here? If not, let's go ahead and populate it. Um, I prefer kind of doing uh, a lazy approach where I wait to the last minute, and then I grab it right as I need it, and I don't actually save it until uh, I actually have something of value to save. So in this case, I'm going to retrieve it, and I'm going to use my key of high scores. Um, and I'm then going to check to see if it's null, I would like to just initialize my high scores. So I'm just going to do that. And I'm not even going to persist it. I'm simply going to sort it and then return it. When I actually have something of value to save, that's when I'll save it. And then in this function here, it would go ahead and just grab it. It would exist. We would just sort it and then return it. Uh, so, moving down here um, is high score. This is already calling this here. This is nicely encapsulated, so there's nothing we need to do here. The next part, add uh, high score. The get part is already encapsulated, so we don't care. Um, that's already taken care of for us there. So, this logic is the same. We're pushing it and sorting it. So, now what we'll actually want to do is then persist the high scores and then persist that previous name. So local storage service, and I'm going to call set. And what I'm going to do here is then do first previous name. I'm going to set that equal to name. Local storage service set. And I'm going to do high scores. I'm going to set the equal to scores. And you want to make sure that, obviously, these are the same here, so that when I'm setting will then be retrieved at a later point. Now, I should point out that, as I had previously said, local storage only works with strings. So that if you want to store something, you need to do a json.stringify. And if you want to retrieve something, you'll need to do a json.parse when you're dealing with complex data types. But you might have noticed that I'm actually not doing that in this case. And the reason I'm able to not, for, to not do it in this case, and it still works, is that on modern browsers, they'll do this for you. And really, under the surface, they're just doing a JSON stringify and a JSON parse. Um, because I'm only targeting the latest and greatest of Internet Explorer, uh, Google Chrome, and Mozilla Firefox, I'm able to not do that step. Um, but it's something to keep in mind that if you are targeting, say, a much older web browser, uh, maybe it's some very, wh whatever, the, maybe some weird mobile browser, whatever the platform might be, um, that might be something you want to do just to play it safe. And the next thing I want to do then is moving down here, get previous name. I'm going to want to retrieve this value here. Uh, in this case, since the way I wrote it, I'm fine if this comes back as null. So I'm not going to need to check has this been initialized, hasn't. So local storage service, get previous name. And then finally down here in our reset uh, function. Now, if we were saving multiple things, uh, we would want to remove those pieces individually. Since um, this is the only local storage we're using throughout this entire application, um, I'm fine just doing a clear all. I can just wipe everything out. Uh, you really want to make sure it, um, it just, um, it really depends on the need of your application. 
So in this case, I'm going to do this and do a clear all. All right, so at this point, uh, let's jump over to the application and let's make sure it's working. Okay, so we're back here. Uh, let me go ahead and refresh this. So uh, we can see it initialized just fine. Now I'm going to, let's say, do lower, higher, lower, higher, higher. So the game here, great. So it's had a high score. So I'm going to go ahead and put my name in it. So let's verify. I can see my name has been added here. And let's go ahead and close this and reopen it here. So as you remember before, nothing was actually being persisted. Uh, so in this case, if we go back to it and we check our high score table, we can see that test is still there. And let's try out the uh, reset uh, high scores function that uh, ends up actually calling this reset here. So I'm going to reset high scores. Am I sure? Yep. And it's cleared it all out, and now everything has been reinitialized. So with that, that's really all there is to it, to using uh, local storage. Uh, and with AngularJS, there's this nice project out here that wraps everything up nicely. Uh, so once again, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and make sure you follow us on Twitter. We've got a lot of other great content coming down the pipeline here. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.